How did you get into the field of meteorology and studying climate science? Well, that's actually a funny story. Uh, when I was in Gainesville, I was studying engineering, but I never completed my degree. And it was several years later, uh, like, I need to complete a degree, but I'm really passionate about the weather. Mm -hmm. So I transferred to FSU, and uh, there I earned a bachelor and a master's degree. Uh, the funny part of it is having so much background in engineering, mm -hmm. fluid dynamics, uh, hydrodynamics, all that, thermodynamics, I'd been exposed to all that. And with the atmosphere, it's just a different fluid. Mm. So my professors thought I was brilliant, where really I had a leg up on all the others. Sure, sure. Growing up in Florida and um, observing climate and extreme weather events and climate change over the time, has, has that impacted your research and, and what you've, um, really what your goals and what you do as a, in your career? Yeah, what, uh, what really got me interested in climate, uh, even more so than weather, was living through several of these El Nino episodes sure. and the storminess that it brought, and it just fascinated me. And at FSU, I, was, I uh, came under the mentorship of James O'Brien, who is, mm -hmm. was a world expert in El Nino. Okay. So I learned a lot. Uh, I learned about applied climate, and it was when, uh, as I was finishing my master's degree, he became the state climatologist. And so he kept me on to help spin up the state climate program, and mm -hmm. I, it mm -hmm. turned into a career. Absolutely. And is this intersection between looking at climate and public health and human health within agriculture, is this a relatively new field of concern or has this been going on for, for some time now? No, it's been going on for okay. some time. Uh, we just finished uh, last year a project with the Florida Department of Health uh, called BRACE, funded by the Centers for Disease Control, mm -hmm. looking at climate, climate change and, and the different risks uh, for human health. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we've been working with the Department of Health. It, it, it's a growing field. Uh, I never really concentrated on agriculture specifically, mm -hmm. but certainly they're a very, very vulnerable population Absolutely. working outside of, yeah. almost exclusively. Absolutely. What, one last question. What is, would you say, is one of the main limiting factors of getting some of this information about extreme weather events and climate to the folks that could really benefit from hearing about it. Oh, again, with the help, with the partnership with Extension, mm -hmm. uh, that, that kind of communication has really uh, grown over the years. So we're, we're making some inroads, and the information is more and more out there, and Absolutely. the community is more and more accepting of it. So okay. that is happening. Uh, some barriers are sometimes growers and and farmers don't have a lot of flexibility in what they can change sure. between markets and varieties and and such they're often locked into a certain uh, way of doing things and it's it's hard to implement change based on climate absolutely okay well thank you so much david i appreciate your time all right thank you